All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. I've got some uh, 28 millimeter French Align units from Warlord Games. These are the same French line units that are from the uh, mass of primer gray built soldiers that I have collecting dust. I finally decided to give it another shot. This would be the fourth try. First few attempts, they just uh, they didn't look as good as I, I thought they should, or at least could. So over the weekend, uh, starting yesterday morning, I gave it another shot, and this time I ignored that voice of uh, doubt that likes to sound off in the back of my head. I also tried to uh, be a little more realistic and accept the fact that these will never look like those that are on the box that's just never going to happen so uh, I threw perfection out the window and just tried to find a kind of comfortable compromise a, uh, a pace at which I was comfortable with and just kept going so as mentioned these are already put together and primered so I, I've, I've saved myself the trouble there all I needed to do was put paint to plastic and I started with black and then did uh, every soldier who uh, well they all have boots and hat and shakos but I did black first on all of them so I guess you call that batch painting and then I did uh, I believe uh, brown so lots of uh, musket rifles uh, pouches, packs, things of that nature. Then white, plenty of straps and pants to paint there. Uh, very tedious, those straps. And then I think I went with uh, some flesh for the hands and face, some hair. Oh, brown also for the hair. And then what else did I do? Some uh, oily, oily steel for the uh, musket barrel and bayonet, and some of the uh, tin items that the soldiers are carrying on their backs, and finally the uh, colorful palms and the thistles and things of that nature. Oh, also some brass or some uh, Shaco de Decor, Shaco Deco, some epaulets. But anyway, I learned a lot along the way and I'm still learning as we go. One of the things that I learned is this is just not one generic line of uh, French, no. We have flank companies, that is what these are. Flank companies typically consist of a light and or a grenadier unit this would be the grenadier unit here and this would be the light unit here now the thing that I came to realize is that units uh, in this pack not all of them have epaulets on the shoulders so for those that do they need to go on the flanks so I had to sort that out uh, bear in mind I had also glued all these guys down all the them that I have are glued to their bases so I had to pop them off with a exacto blade because I've been playing with them in the past uh, but I've got the uh, soldiers with epaulets sorted out and on the flanks and then I realized that if you look on these guys most of them their little shako the balls on their shakos are what palms or pom poms you can't have the flank units with palms they have to have what thistles or whatever the hell they're called so I had to switch heads on guys that was a lot of fun so that the thistles were on the flank units and the palms were on the non flank units and make sure that as I've already mentioned the flank units have the epaulets got all that sorted out which took a little bit of time and kept moving forward so I got to the, and these are not based as you can tell yet, they're not even glued down. I got to the command stand and that was, uh, it was fun but also a bit cumbersome because there's lots of colors going on here. I had to break out some, I think, Prussian blue, some reds on some of the uh, sleeve cuffs, uh, some brass on some of the epaulets, 
And I did their Shacos in different colors. Now, the different color thing with the Shacos doesn't bother me so much in the command stand, but, and you've seen pictures, right, of a number of these uh, French late war, that is to say roughly 1815 line units with gray great coats, brown great coats, khaki color great coats, kind of intermixed and mingled into a unit. I considered doing that, but psychologically I don't know that I could live with it, so I kept them all uniform and gray. I suppose I could change that if I wanted moving forward, don't know that I will. But uh, something about having different colored great coats, I don't know if I can do that. Maybe I can in the future, but at this point, I don't know that I can. So the command stand here, um, anything else of note? Oh, I had uh, came to learn that the tassels that are on the flag, there's a British style and a French style. So the French style is more of like a ribbon style, while the British tassels for their flag is more of like a, uh, a woven rope style, for lack of a better term. So I had to switch that to the French ribbons, because I had that wrong. Then I realized I had the, well it does come with, and you'll never be able to see it on this thinking camera, this does have a molded eagle on the flagstaff, which is very cool. Well I had that on backwards, facing the wrong way, so I had to pop it off again, face it the right way. Took care of that. And uh, I think the final thing I did was, and this is what really made this work for me, because it's the first time I've used it, I used a uh, dark tone wash from I believe Army Painter, it's one of the bottles that comes in a box set, and washed everything. And it really brought brought them, how do I put this? Prior to using it, it, it just looked rough and unfinished, and after using the wash, I don't know how it works, it's magic. But it makes everything look kind of consistent within the paint schemes on each soldier. Also makes it a little darker. It makes things look a little less uh, clean and fresh, a little, little more realistic, I guess, dirtier. This is new to me. Now, in the past, say 10, 15 years ago, painting Flames of War 15 millimeter is very forgiving when you make mistakes. The amount of detail that you need to fuss with is minimal. When you get up to 28 millimeter, the the amount of detail in these things is is a pretty pretty uh, impressive. In fact, I have just had to decide to forego a, a vast amount of detail. I did not mess with mustaches, for instance, or eyes. You know, I, I mean, you just have to draw the line somewhere. So, uh, train of thought. Um, where was I going with that? The wash, uh, yeah, it, it just was fantastic. And again, the, the Flames of War stuff that I used, uh, painted back in the day, I dry brushed them, and it really, it, I mean, it, it had its effect, but it, it, the end result looked more like a scuffed charcoal effect. I didn't know from washes back then, or didn't care to know, but I finally gave in, and these washes are really something. It, uh, it's allowed me to live with my painting results and it really all it is, is it's, it's like a, uh, for those of you unfamiliar with it, it's like a stain almost, of like a, think of like a wood stain. And you just take your brush and you just, wa you just drip it over them and wash them and brush them all, uh, all over and it fills all those cracks and crevices and creases and wrinkles and really adds a nice uh, effect to the guy. So. What you're looking at here is this again. This started yesterday morning. I went off and on all day yesterday. I went off and on all day today. This is the end result. Now again, they're not based yet. What I'll probably do is the dry decks, old school method, and uh, base them that way. Maybe some flock. I'm not sure yet. Static grass. I haven't messed with static grass before, so I may do that. But this is only maybe, we'll say, one-seventh, one-eighth of the French infantry I have sitting around. So a lot more yet to paint. Not to mention four uh, artillery guns and their crew. Um, and one, two, three units of cavalry. And that should prove interesting, learning to paint cavalry. Because just because you have everything that you know or need to know about infantry down, 
it's a whole new ball game for cavalry as far as colors and paint schemes and all that. Not to mention the British. So I don't plan on hitting the British until I get done with the French. I say that now. We'll see how it goes. Uh, roughly the same amount of British infantry waiting to be painted. And it, that should be fun because, again, this having this stuff painted pr uh, primer gray really worked out because, well, the French all have gray great coat so that saved painting there and then when it comes to the British their pants are uh, gray so once I put the red on it's uh, I'll be off to the races and I must say having put what little red I did on these guys I can tell you that red's gonna look real good on uh, the British with the white straps so also the uh, I think I have three units of British cavalry it's a lot of painting yet to do. It's a start, and you know, for as long as I fussed and whined and complained, and uh, I probably could have had these guys painted already. So I, it's time I got started. Happy with the results thus far. They're not perfect. This is about the extent of my ability. It's an ability I can live with. And once they're basing on the table, they're going to look just fine. But I wanted to share that with you. That's where I'm at. <clears throat> Again, a lot left to paint. And uh, a couple of questions um, before I go. Now, this camera will only focus to such an extent because it's it's crap. You see this guy's pack on the back? It'll focus for a second and then not. You see his pack? What is the two items that he has carry, he's carrying on his back? I apologize for my crap camera. What are those? So I've painted them metallic, but my gut instinct says that's wrong. My gut instinct says it's loaves of bread. I'm not sure why I think that. I guess they look like loaves of bread. And that's probably what they are. You know, some of these guys have uh, strings of onions they're carrying. No, really, strings of onions, like this guy here. He has, trying to get my camera to focus, he has onions, so I painted that up. So I'm thinking it's bread, but I want, I'd like to know what it is, and I can't find listed anywhere what the hell that is. Nobody's said or talked about it, so I'd like to get that right. Also, uh, anything you see here that looks incorrect, please let me know, because I don't want to have incorrect guys on the table when I'm all done. When I'm done, I want to be done. I don't want to be correcting and fixing things. Uh, Detail-wise, I may have left some things out. Again, that is intentional. I can only allow myself to do so much, and then I had to draw the line. Now, my other question is, who are these guys? Are these French or are these British? I want to say they're French, but I can't remember what box set they came with, and uh, they're not listed. I don't think they're British. But um, let me know so I paint them correctly. And, and I don't know why the hell I have them. So I have these uh, command units, which is this. I've got four more over here ready to go. But that leaves me about three short if I want to paint all of my French infantry. So I either need to get more, two, three more command units, or start working in some of these folks. But I don't know what, what those guys are or, or what they're supposed to represent. That's just a few questions. I'll have more as I go along, especially once I start hitting cavalry, artillery, and especially the British. So that's that. Again, fairly happy with the results. Um, it's hard to believe that I actually got I got a unit painted. That's pretty cool. All right, guys, I'll cut you loose. Uh, I'm going to go finish the third period of the Colorado Las Vegas game. And... Uh, not sure what's up with the abs, but um, the gimmick knights seem to have found their legs here of late. The last game and this game. But I still have faith in my abs, and uh, hopefully they can pull it off. Since the blues are out, i got to have somebody to root for, and the abs swept them. But uh, rooting for the abs here. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll keep in touch.